rock and roll. Okay, so hello, superstars of health. Uh, if we haven't met yet, my name is Dr. Devin Luzad, owner of Spinal Care of Nevada in Summerlin and Henderson. Listen, my patients, just call me Dr. Devin, so you can do the same. Today is the perfect posture program. It is, without a doubt, one of my most exciting topics that I'm the most passionate about. And that being said, I think I'm gonna sit up a little straighter. Nothing in life makes us look and feel older than bad posture. Let's be honest about it. Posture, um, in my opinion, is, is really one of the next big conversations in anti-aging along with getting better sleep. Improving your posture will help reduce pain, increase energy, improve sleep. Um, so for this live webinar today, we're gonna teach you how to correct that hump in your upper back, how to fix those shoulders that are rolled forward, how to walk more smoothly. I have patients that come in and say, I've got a duck walk. And so we work on fixing that or they limp or they can't walk very far, how to sit taller, stand up straighter, all of that fun stuff. Now, the important thing is that the seminar is all about you. Okay, you've worked most of your life, you're ready for your golden years. And for some of you, because you work so hard, guess what? Not that golden. Um, sometimes the body breaks down. So the information we're gonna give you is gonna help you have more energy, less fatigue, again, sleep better, look younger, not that that's important, move younger, reduce pain, have better flexibility. And listen, hopefully with the help of, of your other doctors, reduce some of the medications you're on, maybe even avoid surgery. Um, but the funny thing is this, the seminar is actually not just about you because your health affects everyone around you. And yeah, I get it. Sometimes people say, well, I can learn to live with it, right? But you always got to remember that then the people around you have to learn to live with you. I'll never forget. We had a patient one time I was in the grocery store and they came up to me, uh, said hi and said, Hey, thank you so much for taking care of big Irv. It's a, you know, older member of their family because they said when Irv's hurting, we're all hurting. So your health affects everybody around you. This is about making you a better life, but helping the people uh, in your life, your kids, your grandkids. And I think it's a good idea too, to set some health goals. Okay. In my practice, when we sit down with patients, we ask them not just why are you here? In other words, what pain are you having? Neck pain, back pain, this type of thing. But we also ask them when you get better, what do you want to be able to do better? Um, I had a patient one time, he's a, he's a roofer. He's in his sixties. He doesn't go up on roofs anymore. He's in management, but he said, you know, I would just love to have my back and my knees feel better so that I can walk around Disneyland with my grandkids. And you know what? Eventually Jim was able to do that. Um, if you worked your life, if you've given to the community, you give to your family after a while, you, you have an empty cup. Okay. And you can't give any more from an empty cup. So let's fill that cup up. Let's meet your goals together. Could be just, Hey doc, I want to get up in the morning and, and move a little better. Okay. Less pain. When I go to bed at night, I, I want to be able to sleep without pain in my body. I want to have independence. I want to be able to travel, take that cruise I've always wanted to take. Um, but I speak on all these topics. Uh, I've spoken at huge corporations like um, uh, Walmart Corporation, Keller Williams. Williams Sonoma has a, has a corporate center with about 750 people in it. Um, and then I speak to my patients, uh, church groups, um, health groups. Because again, I believe as a doctor, a few important things. Number one, it's important to teach my patients how to fish. Okay, meaning if I can teach you how to take care of yourself, you don't become reliant on a doctor. So whatever ache or pain my patients start with, there's a point where we release them from care and give them special stretches, special exercises, things for their posture, like, like what we're going to go through today. So that down the road, I may see people every now and then for maintenance, but again, teaching you how to take care of yourself. Another thing I believe about uh, wellness and being a doctor is not just helping people with their symptoms. Okay, I'm not against drugs and surgery. There's a time and place for everything, but we wanna get to the cause of health problems because how are you gonna fix something long-term if you don't get to the cause? And that's what I'm best at is long-term solution. Um, doctors have two ears, one mouth. Doctors should be good listeners. Also, I believe that it's important for doctors to refer out if I can't help someone, it's my responsibility to get them to the right place. And I believe it's important, um, you know, as a doctor to take care of the whole family. 
Okay, so that being said, I wouldn't be a good new dad if I didn't brag just a little bit. Uh, I wanna share my three best friends with you. It's my wife, Erin, my newborn son, Carson, his birthday's coming up on December 24th, so he'll be a one-year-old, and my little buddy, Clover the Rottweiler. She's an important member of our family too. Okay, just had to brag a little bit. Um, let's, get, uh, let's get going here. Um, so I have two wellness-based clinics, okay? There's five key beliefs to wellness that you have to have before we even get into any of this information if you wanna have the highest quality of life. I get that, you know, a lot of you don't, you know, because I ask people all the time, do you want to live to be 100? Guess what most people say? Nope, because that's too much pain, too much suffering. I'll lose all my friends, lose all my money. But what if you had a high quality of life? Then you'd want to live a lot longer. So there's five key beliefs to living to 100 and living a wellness lifestyle. Number one is being natural. Okay, and by natural, what I mean is anytime you have a pain or health problem, you want to try to solve that without drugs or surgery. The third leading cause of death in the United States, according to the American Medical Association, is side effects to prescription drugs. And again, I'm not against doctors or drugs. Thank God we have them. I've had to use all of that. Um, but by a show of hands in our audience today, how many of you would agree that if you can, it's better to solve something naturally than use drugs and surgery? Raise your hand. Yeah, absolutely. Most of us are in agreement with that. In fact, we spend more as a country on drugs and surgery. We spend like a trillion, well over a trillion dollars on that type of medical care, so which is more than anybody else. We spend more than any other country on that level of invasive medical care. But guess where we're ranked overall for our health? One of the worst for industrialized nations. We're in the 30s. So we spend the most, we're ranked the worst for our health. And what that really tells us is that there's gotta be a better way to get healthy and that is by being more natural. The second thing that we all probably agree on is being more preventative, okay? More proactive. Because the more proactive you are, you save money. There's less suffering. There's less damage, okay? The more reactive you are, in other words, saying things like, well, it's not bad enough yet, or I'm gonna wait till it goes away on its own or I'll learn to live with it. The more reactive we are, we end up with fewer options. And guess what? Those options get a lot more invasive. Um, one of the common things I see is a patient who sits down and says, things have come and gone for a long time and now it's at its worst. And that's because every time you feel a symptom in your body that comes and goes, your spine is actually getting weaker. Kind of like if you, um, I don't have a paper clip, but if you bent a paper clip back and forth, eventually it becomes something else. Okay, so being, and I'm not gonna try to, pretend I can cure all your health problems in one quick talk today. But if we can all shift a little bit closer to being more proactive and preventative, in other words, taking action, then I've done my job. Okay, so one more um, audience participation here. How many of you agree it's better to solve a health problem early than wait till we get into the emergency room? Yes? Okay, I think we're all on the same page with that. The other three topics of um, importance with wellness is allow the body to heal itself. You don't always need a pill, a powder, or a potion. Um, you want to build your body so that it can heal itself. You're, the, you're, you're actually your own greatest drugstore. We just got to get the interference out of the way. That's what the perfect posture program is definitely about. Um, the fourth thing is that, hey, listen, in order to be healthy and have wellness, it's going to be a little bit inconvenient. You got to schedule time for it. And the final one is consistency. Health is, was, and it always will be about consistency. So I promise you guys this, the next six hours is gonna be amazing for you. Okay, we're gonna go about a half hour because one of my mentors once taught me that if you're not like really, really funny and entertaining, don't talk for longer than 40 minutes. So we're gonna keep the information powerful, concise, and some of it's gonna be a, a repeat for you. You've heard it before, but that's okay. Like we all need to hear things like 10, 15 times for them to really sink in. Here's how the seminar is gonna go today. Um, I'm gonna go through the content. Then I'm gonna teach, uh, tell you how you can get a recording of it because you're gonna need to see this over and over, all the moves that we're gonna show you. We'll save some time at the end for Q&A, even though honestly, there's almost never questions. Um, 
as we go through this, the first section, which is the content, is divided up into three sections. Number one, teaching you things you can do during your daily activities, your lifestyle, to improve your posture. The second part of the content is the actual perfect posture program, a specific set of stretches and exercises that we train our patients on to improve your posture. Um, but here's what you need to know. If you tuned in today looking for that magic pill or, you know, hey doc, what button can I push to, to make this better? This is the wrong seminar for you. It's gonna take work, it's gonna take consistency. It's the art of practice. And listen, it doesn't have to be perfect. Done is better than perfect, right? Great is the enemy of good. Just get going on it. But I promise you, it's not gonna be easy. Okay. I also promise you it'll be worth it. And the third part of the content is we're going to talk about um, the, uh, the techniques we specifically use in the office to help people improve their posture. Okay. So before we get into this, I hear a little pitter patter footsteps. Are you coming up? Yeah. No. Okay. Pretty soon we're going to have a little visitor coming behind me. It's Carson's bedtime. So we'll all get to say hi to him. Yeah, your bed keychain, so nice okay. Okay. You we're all, we're all anticipating his arrival. Okay. Hi, Car Car. All right. Good night, sweetie. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully he's been watching my sleep videos on YouTube on how to get better sleep. Okay. So let's get into what bad posture um, actually does to you. This has been an amazing last really five years on research and bad posture. Um, studies are showing that Poor posture relates to cognitive decline. This should perk up all your ears. Cognitive decline has to do with losing your memory, decreased brain function, inability to think. Severe cognitive decline is dementia. Okay, so just by improving your posture, you prolong your brain's ability to do its job. We found that poor posture affects development in children. Um, good posture will improve your breathing, okay? Because think of it this way. If you have this slunched over uh, shoulders and the hump in your back and what's called forward shoulder posture, that compresses your chest cavity. It stresses your thoracic spine. In fact, research shows that bad posture can decrease lung function by 30%. So it's gonna help you breathe better. It's even gonna help your balance, okay? Or what's called proprioception, which is your ability to uh, deal with the environment and uh, move in space. It's going to improve your flexibility. And I've probably mentioned this a million times, but better for your sleep. So posture is like the, the structural framework of your body. Improving it um, is also associated with more strength, right? Slouse posture is weakness, causes uh, pain in the body, um, even things like neurological disorders. So in, in schools today, um, more and more schools around the world what they're actually doing is they're creating health initiatives uh, and making it a public health um, program to improve posture at a young age. Okay, so most of you probably were told stand up straighter. It's like a rite of passage in your teenage years, all those nagging adults. You probably nagged your kids, but it was for their good, okay? Let me tell you some ways to test your own posture, okay? And you don't have to do this right now, um, or you can, what I want you to do is next time you're near a wall, you stand so that your back is leaning up against the wall. Your feet are a couple inches away from the wall. Your shoulder blades and your butt should be touching the wall. You should be able to take your hand, just gently slide it behind your back with your head and your shoulders both leaning up against the wall. If you can't do that, what you need to do is suck your belly button in a little bit because that means you actually have too much curve in your back and bring your shoulders back a bit, okay? That's how you can test bad posture. You can also obviously look in the mirror. Do you have a high or low shoulder? Do you have head tilt? Look in the mirror from the side view. Is your head leaning forward? Do you have a hump? Do your shoulders slump forward? All of these things can actually lead to pain in the body. Poor posture can cause headaches. When I help people improve their posture in the office, headaches go away, jaw pain can go away, tension type uh, pain that shoots up into the head. Obviously things like neck and back pain, but believe it or not, 
bad posture up here can affect your knees, your hip, foot pain. It can cause uh, rotator cuff problems. Um, it can also, like we talked about, cause uh, breathing and fatigue. Okay, so in your daily life, what has been causing bad posture? Well, one thing is whenever you have injuries, okay? Knocks, bumps, falls, car accidents, things like this, even things 20, 30 years ago, what happens is it causes muscle spasm, which spasm is good in a way, it's your body's way to protect itself. Um, but staying in spasm causes your muscles to weaken over time and form bad posture habits. And that's muscle tension, uh, muscle weakness. Daily habits can lead to bad posture. We're gonna talk about how to sit in a chair, how to sleep in your bed, use of technology, okay? More and more, what are we doing? We're looking at our phones, okay? We're hunched over looking at that small laptop on our table, okay? All of that affects your posture over time as well. Here's one you may not have thought of, bad mental attitude and stress can lead to bad posture. Research shows when we get angry, we tend to lean forward with our head and what do we do? We fold our arms and we sit like that. Folding your arms, crossing your arms is probably one of the worst habits over time that leads to bad posture. Obviously shoes, okay, don't get mad at me. High heels can throw your body into a misalignment. So I'm not telling you not to wear high heels. I'm just saying, you know, don't live in the things, okay? That's all I'm saying. Uh, purses, again, not going to advise you what to do with your purse, but maybe once a quarter, take a look in there and pull some stuff out. We did that with my wife's purse a few months ago, and we found um, like a screwdriver and a jar of peanut butter. It's amazing what you can find in there. Okay, back to the information. So that's what bad posture looks like. We're going to look at things like a um, the dowager sump. The dowager sump, by the way, technically is also called a kyphosis. Kyphosis is when your back humps out back that way. A lordosis is when it curves forward. So when I take um, in, in our office, when we sit down with a new patient, one of the exams we do is we look at their posture from head to toe. We look in a mirror, we study it, um, and then we take what are called digital opposing view x-ray studies. And on those x-rays, then you can really see the bad posture because you can even see some soft tissue on an x-ray and you can see this hump sticking out. You can see shoulders unlevel, you can see hips unlevel. So that's how we measure all of it. Um, but here's also how bad posture directly uh, affects your spine and what's called your neurology. And your neurology is obviously all the nerves sitting in your body. Okay, so think of this. Your brain sits uh, up here and it sends the nerves all the way down your spine. This, the nerves then come out the side of the spine and they run every organ, muscle, cell in your whole body. So when you have a bone out of place, could be from scoliosis, bad posture, or you had an injury or repetitive stress, what it does is it pinches the nerves. Okay, so if you have a pinched nerve up here in your upper neck, guess what? That'll cause headaches. Can even run to the eyes, nose, ears, can cause allergies. Uh, my job in the office is to find where these bones are out of place and obviously correct it. Okay, this area here, the middle of your neck, those are the nerves that run all the way down your arms. It also runs to something in the front of your throat called the thyroid, which is metabolism. So when patients come in with arm pain, carpal tunnel, we always check that area. Okay, this is the true dowager's hump. This area, if you formed a hump there, it pinches the nerves to your lungs, to your heart, causes that pain in the middle of your back, which you, know, you can't quite reach back and get to. If you have a bone out of place a little bit lower down, those nerves actually run into the stomach. So it can cause things like stomach problems too. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the whole spine, but pinched nerves anywhere throughout your body, it's not just about pain. Um, it's actually about function um, in your daily activities. So what can you do on your own? Um, some of you had scoliosis as a child, you have it as an adult. Okay, scoliosis actually stops like around 17 or 18 years old because you know, the bones get hard and, and it stops bending. However, when we get into our 50s, later 50s, what happens to the bones? They start getting softer, osteoporosis, osteopenia. Um, and that's also why we shrink because those bends pick up where we left off. I'm all the time treating um, adults, people even in their 60s and 70s with scoliosis. So what can you do? 
As far as strengthening the bones, um, I think you're well aware that calcium has a good effect, but not really necessarily from a supplement. They did a study, they've done this study many times where they take four groups. One group took calcium supplements um, and did exercise, okay, like, like walking. Another group just took calcium, another group just exercised, and the fourth group did nothing. That's a placebo group, right? Of those four, only two of the groups were actually shown to slow down their bone loss and even reverse it. That is the calcium and exercise group and the exercise group. So what that tells us is supplemental calcium really does very little from the bones. You gotta get it from the diet. You get it from beans, almonds, uh, uh, salmon, spinach, kale, all of these are good sources of calcium. What else, vitamin D, preferably 15 to 20 minutes in the sun when the sun is out. Um, also, naturally, egg yolk. Taking supplemental vitamin D is useful. Just a quick tip for you, make sure when you take supplemental vitamin D and you know the doses, I have to say this, you need to talk to your doctor, can be anywhere from one to 5,000 IU, but take it with a supplement called K2. Most of the time that's now being built in because K2 is a taxi cab driver that gets the vitamin D into the bones. Okay, potassium's role is very important. Okay, studies have been shown in pre and post menopausal women to have shown that a diet high in potassium can improve your bone health. Get it from again, yogurt, bananas, but you gotta have that weight bearing exercise. Okay, getting out walking, getting into your gym. Um, caffeine, again, more than two cups a day is an issue. It, accelerated bone loss. Alcohol, again, more than one to two uh, glasses a day is an issue. And uh, finally, don't join NASA. <laughs> Studies have shown that astronauts that go up into space without the effect of gravity have more bone loss. Okay, as far as your sleeping posture, and, and I, I do an entire seminar on sleeping position, energy. In fact, I think not in January, but in February, I think February, we're gonna do the better sleep webinar, uh, improve your energy, uh, reduce fatigue. But I wanna give you a, a few tips on that. When you're sleeping at night, the healthiest position is actually on your back with pillows under your knees. And if you have some breathing trouble, some pillows underneath your upper back, that's the most neutral position. The next best is on your side. Slide a pillow in between your knees. Okay, when women are pregnant, they teach them to do that, but we all need to do that, guys, too, because think about this. When we're standing up, our legs are hip width apart, but when we are on our side, our legs and knees come together. That compresses our low back and hips. So a pillow in between the knees, hug a pillow, because if you don't have a pillow in front of you, your shoulders are going to tend to roll, okay? And pillow height, like let's imagine my bed is here and I'm sleeping on my side. The pillow height should keep your head in a neutral position. What's the worst sleeping position? I'm sorry to say, and I'm not judging you because I know there's some stomach sleepers here, but sleeping on your tummy, okay? Because just like that video I showed you with all the nerves coming out of the neck, if you're on your stomach, your head is cranked to one side or the other for most of the night. Now, on our YouTube channel, which will be up January 1st, and I'll talk to you about that, I actually do a video on how to sleep most safely on your stomach, so you can check that out. Um, but again, when we see patients who have sciatica, neuropathy, disc problems, we get them to start to spend more and more time on their back with their legs up, which takes pressure off. Okay, how about sitting posture? As I sit myself up, let's all do this. I want everybody who's sitting in a chair to bend forward for me. Everybody bend forward. Now, scoot your rear end all the way back in that chair so it, it, it hits the back of that chair. Now lean back. If you are sitting forward in your chair or your rear end is not touching the back, what you're more likely to do, turn to the side here, what you're more likely to do is slouch until your back hits the back of that chair. But if you get your rear end back and sit back, now you start to use that chair for support. We even tell patients to drop a little tennis ball back behind them. That way you're not slunching forward. If you don't feel that tennis ball, it means you're not sitting up straight. Okay, now if your feet aren't hitting the floor, you either need a lower chair or you need a pillow underneath your feet, but that's perfect sitting position. Now also you want your arms at 90 degree angle. So if you're typing, you don't want them up here. Your monitor should be eye level. So as I'm looking at my monitor, 
the middle of the monitor is just about eye level. It's, if it's at an angle or off to the side, and some people have multiple monitors if you're still working, um, you wanna be able to turn and face the monitor because doing this all day will also cause a pinched nerve. Now, you get up in the morning, what's the first thing you should do? Kick the pillows off, turn to your side. In other words, don't sit up straight, let your legs flop off the bed and prop yourself. In fact, I'll give you three things to do first thing in the morning. Uh, thank God you're still breathing. In other words, give thanks. Um, stretch, every animal on the world in the world does it. And tell your loved one how much you love them or yell to the other room if they're in the other room, okay? Um, and then flop off your legs off, sit up, practice good sitting position wherever you go. Some of you get in the car, okay? Do the same thing when you're in your car. Lean forward, scoot back, sit up, adjust your mirror. And that way, the next time you get in your car, if you can't see out of your rear view mirror, it's because you're not practicing good posture. Now, driving long distances, um, some important information on that. The old way of teaching driving is 10 and two, okay? Just like this. That's not where we wanna be. We actually wanna be closer down underneath the wheel at like seven or eight and four, okay? And here's why. When your hands are on top of the wheel, what happens to my shoulders? Okay, they roll forward. That's internal rotation of the shoulders. That's the hump we're trying to avoid. Okay, that's called pronation or pronating your palms. I want you to all right now, let's all do this. Supinate your hands, okay? Palms up, supinate. And see how that, what that does is it brings your shoulders back. See that? Pronate is, rolls them forward, supinate is back. So when you're doing a long distance drive, heck, even a 45 minute drive, half hour drive, get in a good sitting position, supinate your hands, hold the wheel more underneath, and that allows you to bring your shoulders back. Okay. When you're standing, it's the same conversation. When you're standing in line at a grocery store or Costco, I don't want you standing in slump posture. I want you to take your hands, reach them back, put them in your back pocket, and that starts to supinate your hands and bring your shoulders back. Okay. Then let your arms hang down and you start to have that good looking posture. Okay. So those are some things that you can be doing during your daily activities to improve your posture. Um, the, the key components are this, is we want to get away from this by simply squeezing your shoulder blades together, okay? Squeezing those shoulder blades together and loosening up your chest muscles will start to expand your chest so you can breathe better too. Um, but that being said, what I'm going to do now is open up the Perfect Posture Program for us, okay? And the Perfect Posture Program is something that um, I've designed really over the last 20 years. Um, it's a process, like anything good, it, it takes time, um, but it's something that if you put the time in, you will see noticeable change uh, in your body. So um, we're going to bring that up on the screen right now. You could take notes, but again, I'm going to show you how to actually get um, a video of all this um, at a later date. Okay, so what you're about to see on your screen, this is a very high-level state-of-the-art program, um, which we use in the office to assign people different stretches, exercises. For example, I have protocols when people have back pain or neck pain or hip problems or knee problems that once we're done treating, we put them on specific protocols. Um, and in this, I've designed the perfect posture program as well. Okay, so over here at the top, uh, the program actually starts out discussing proper sleep position, which we've already gone over. So we're gonna go over this, I, I am, work on this program all the time. There's 12 maneuvers that we're gonna do. The very first one is called head retraction, okay? You're gonna stand up straight. You're gonna put you know, two fingers on your chin and you're gonna retract your head back. Now, what I want you to notice is she's not tipping her head back and looking up at the ceiling. What she's doing is bringing her chin straight back and you'll feel a little stretch in the back of the neck. That's head retraction, keeping the eyes level, chin level, and just simply almost like a turtle, bring that head back. And you'll start to feel that pressure, that stretch in the back of your neck. Number two, the bilateral doorway stretch. 
Elbows about a little bit below shoulder level and some of you have shoulder problems so you can't raise it up that high anyhow. Leaning forward into the doorway. All of these stretches, by the way, you want to hold them for about 15 to 30 seconds initially. You could do it every day. I'm going to recommend three times a week. You can build up 30 seconds to a minute, up to a two minute hold. You could do it every day again. Like I said, some people are gung ho, but 30 seconds a day, three times a week is the bare minimum. Now, what you'll notice is with the doorway stretch, we're stretching the chest muscles. There are a million and one ways to do this. Okay. I encourage all of you just go online, Google how to stretch your chest. You'll find a lot of different exercises. I'm just giving you a good example of one. Next up, standing shoulder extension. Okay. Stand up tall, grasp your hands behind your back. Now for some of you, that's all you need to do. Some of you can't even close your hands behind your back. That's how tight things are and then start to bring your hands away. Now I wanna caution you, don't start bending forward. So notice she's standing up straight. Don't start leaning over. The key is standing up straight, pushing your chest forward as you bring your arms back. That standing shoulder extension. Next up, wall angels. If you have rotator cuff issues, you probably won't be able to do this. Um, I one of the things I treat in the office is grade one, sometimes grade two rotator cuff tears. Rotator cuffs have a grading system. If it's grade three, that's like a full tear, that's surgery. But a lot of times we can help uh, get a line, better alignment, remove scar tissue and do therapy and, and, and fix those early shoulder tears, um, even if it's chronic. But what she's doing is she's leaning with her head up against the wall, her upper back against the wall and raising her arms up. Now, if this is too difficult, the alternate is laying on your back on the floor. A lot of you are gonna to need to start with that. And as you raise your arms, you're gonna feel your elbows coming up from the floor. That's what you're trying to fight or resist. You're trying to keep your elbows against the wall or against the floor. Okay, so start on the floor. Trust me, it's easier. As you're able to do that, then you can stand up against a wall and do the wall angels. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk a little bit about scar tissue. Um, I'm going to come back here. Okay. Just, just to check in, raise your hands. Everybody can see the videos. Okay. Okay. Um, we need to have a conversation about scar tissue for a moment. You've probably heard the term. Okay. Scar tissue. Think of this normal muscle tissue fits together like strings on a rope. Okay. Under stress or wear and tear or accident injury muscles strain normally the tissues come back together just fine. Scar tissue is when it comes back together all awkward. Some of you have heard you only get scar tissue with surgery. That's, that's not true. You get scar tissue from any uh, prolonged injury um, or repetitive stress to the body. And once you have scar tissue, in fact, some of you can feel it if you reach back there in your shoulders, those muscle knots, that's scar tissue, okay? In our office, one of the therapies we do is we break that up. Now, scar tissue can reform. It takes up to 12 to 18 months for a ligament and tendon, but scar tissue can actually remodel and get younger. So if I work on scar tissue, you're going to get younger. But what scar tissue is doing is it's, it's holding you out of place, okay? It's holding you out of uh, position. So this next section is we're going to work on the scar tissue in your body. Okay, we're going to start with the rhomboids, which is the muscle in your upper middle back on either side of your spine. Now, what you can see she's doing is she's folded her arms, which will expose the rhomboid muscles and leaning back against a tennis ball. Now, what you can't see is the tennis ball is not in the middle of her spine. It's on either side. Okay, when you find a tight, tender spot, you just lean into it. You can also do this on the floor. And some of you, it's so tender, you actually wanna start on your bed to have more cushion. I've graduated to using um, a lacrosse ball because it's harder, um, but that's, yeah, it's taken me a long time and probably a lot of pain to get that loosened up. But that's how you start to break up that hump in your upper back. Okay, next up, you need to buy one of these. It's called a foam roll. You can get them on Amazon and 
where this is positioned is just below the neck on where that hump would be on your upper back. Now, regardless if you have a hump or not, you need to be doing this. Cross your fingers back behind your head and very gently just start to lean backwards. You may hear a couple pops, that's fine. Um, obviously, obviously guys, if you have a new injury to that area, you're gonna avoid this. And you just hold that stretch again 15 30 seconds initially is fine three times a week and that will start to not only create more flexibility in the thoracic spine um it'll start to break up scar tissue okay this is the next version of that after you've done your extensions now you're going to go to breaking up the scar tissue also known as myofascial release or foam roll arms folded which exposes the muscles of the upper back and rocking back and forth. Now, if you're not able to do this, again, lay on the floor with a tennis ball back behind you up against the wall. This is more of an advanced maneuver if you have the strength to do it. And if you don't, that's okay. Okay, this is another advanced maneuver. Okay, you're going to lie onto your stomach. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a, uh, a tennis ball or larger ball right underneath your chest muscle, okay? Because that's why, and I'm gonna come back to the screen for a minute here, okay? Now, here's your clavicle. Everybody put your finger up here, okay? Feel that hard bone? We're gonna avoid that. Never do foam rolling or myofascial work on a bone. You know, some of you, I have one in the other room, bought those automatic thumpers, you know, where you pull the trigger in it and it's like a, it's like a thumper. Never put it on bone. Always work for the soft tissue, which is all in here and in here. Um, that's where you're aiming because a tight chest muscle, again, pulls us forward. That's how we, we get into that uh, slumped posture. Okay, so doing a pec mobility ball, myofascial release, laying on your stomach. Guess what? You can also do it up against the wall. If you're, if you're doing it up against the wall, you may even put your hands behind your back, which will expose that chest muscle more. Okay, and what she's doing, she's moving her arms around while that ball is underneath her chest or up against a wall, and that's moving the muscle against the resistance of that ball, which will also help break up that scar tissue. Okay, we've got Three more moves and then a special bonus fourth one. Okay, take that tennis ball, lay on your back and get that ball, not only underneath your neck here, but down here where I just showed you there's scar tissue on your traps. So again, notice she's not in the middle of her neck. She's on either side of her neck, just gently rolling her head back and forth. This should feel great. You can move the ball up a little bit higher just underneath the skull especially for those of you who get headaches and migraines, that's a trigger point. Uh, it's a, a trigger point is really a collection of scar tissue. It's another area that causes um, tension headaches, migraines, and you can bring it again down more into your traps. But just doing this gently for 30 seconds, even up to a minute, a few times a week, we'll start to break up that scar tissue in the neck. Okay. You need to buy uh, a exercise band. Some of you have these in the gyms in your communities. You can get these uh, again on Amazon. It's just a, um, a uh, you know, a, a exercise band, a tension band. Now, what I want you to notice what he's doing is he's not moving his elbows really far away from his body. His elbows are pivot points. He's starting in tight. He's bringing his elbows out. And what's he doing with his hands? Remember, we learned this word. He's supinating, palms up, okay? That is allowing those shoulders to come back. And what he's really doing is he's strengthening the muscles of his upper back, which will help bring his shoulders back, okay? Lower trap exercise. You wanna do this about 10 to 12 times or what are called 10 to 12 reps. Rest, do it again for 10 to 12 times, rest and do it again. So three sets, of 10 to 12 reps. You're gonna feel a little burn in your back. By the way, there's different tensions uh, of bands that you can experiment with. Obviously, you're gonna start out with the lightest. Okay, this next device, um, 
is something you can again buy on Amazon. It's called a prolordotic lower cervical exerciser. Prolordotic lower cervical exerciser. Okay, and again, it's something that you can uh, Google. You can go into Amazon. So I have patients that just use a towel and that actually can work fine or a rope that can work fine or a very thick exercise band. But you position this band behind your neck, extend your arms out to the side, bring them forward. And then as you're pushing or holding this forward, you start to lean your head back. Hold for a count of three to five seconds. Push and hold your head back. What are we doing here? What we're doing is we're establishing a forward or lordotic curve on your neck. And we're taking this dowager's hump and we're pulling it forward. When I take x-rays on people, we see a lot of times a straight neck. And this is starting to encourage that curve. Okay, now that is the entire perfect posture program. I'm gonna show you a final move, but this is not without, you have to have a doctor's orders for this. If your if you're MD or orthopedist specializes in posture, um, then, then great, or your physical therapist or your chiropractor, but this hat is only some, I'm gonna show this to you, but it's only something that we prescribe in the office, whoo, that we prescribe in the office to our patients. Okay, this is called a dinner roll. Uh, you can, again, you can pick these up on Amazon. And what you do is you place it behind your neck and you lean back onto it and you hold that position for starting at a minute, but leading up to 15 minutes a day, three times a week which also will start to give you that forward neck posture and push in the hump. And the reason why I say don't do this without your doctor's prescription, or if you're a patient, we can eventually get you going on this uh, at home. Um, because I'm going to use the x-ray analysis to show me exactly where to put these. And for some people, if you have extreme cervical or neck instability, it, it can be a danger. So that's why I'm, caught, I'm showing it to you, but it's something you only want to do under your doctor's orders. Okay, welcome back everybody. Okay, that's the perfect posture program. Um, come January 1st, my YouTube channel, which is Spinal Care of Nevada, will be up and running. There's some videos on there now, mostly it just talks about uh, kind of what we do in the office. Um, on the YouTube channel, I'm gonna have all of our 2020 Zoom webinars, including today's. I'm gonna have several videos on better sleep and I'm gonna put in there the world's greatest posture exercise. We didn't go over it today because I'm, I'm making a video on it. The world's greatest posture exercise is kind of for people who don't wanna do this whole program, don't have time or don't have patience. And they just say, doc, if I only schedule, you know, three minutes a day to do one thing, what is it? That's gonna be the world's greatest posture move. That'll be on our YouTube jan uh, channel come January 1st. Basically, you just you just get on your computer, you, you, you type in YouTube, and then once you're into YouTube, you type in our office name, Spinal Care Nevada, and it'll bring up what's called our channel. And you can subscribe to it, you can like the videos, you can share them, and uh, that'll give you full access to everything, including the Perfect Posture Program, um, which, you know, we've just given to you. Okay, so um, upcoming talks, we're going to be doing... Um, the, uh, the pain reduction seminar in January, natural things to reduce pain, sleep better energy in February. Uh, we're not done yet. I've got more information for you, but I just want to take a minute and thank all the organizers getting uh, people in your community together for this. I, I think they do a wonderful job. Um, we went through content. Um, again, I told you how to get the recording, which will be available in January. In, in a few minutes, we're going to do some q and I want to show you um, how we fix posture in the office. By professional training, by the way, I am what's called a NUCA chiropractor. NUCA, uh, it, it's a technique in chiropractic. It's a very gentle approach. Um, so if, if kind of what you're looking for is a chiropractor that does the twisting and cracking, I'm not the right guy for you. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's great. In our office, we just use uh, very, uh, what are called gentle, or low force techniques. What I'm best known for is improving posture, arthritis, uh, pinched nerves, bad discs, uh, disc degeneration. I'm also great with shoulders and, and hips and knees. Normally when I'm at a seminar, I'll then show a demonstration of what it looks like in our office. 
can't do that here. So I'm going to show you a short video of what the techniques we do in the office uh, look like to help bad posture. Hi, this is Dr. Devin. Welcome to Spinal Care Nevada. I've been in practice about 20 years. We do a very gentle style of chiropractic. Come with me. We're going to meet a few of our patients. Hi, Gary. Hi, Marilyn. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hello there. Okay, step into my office. Gary, come on up on the scales. Okay. All right, so on day one in our office, we do a thorough history and digital x rays. Come on off, lay on your right side. And that shows me how to do a very gentle adjustment with patients on your right. Okay, here we go. Okay, here at the top of the neck is the top vertebrae, nicknamed the atlas because it holds your head up. So the theory is if we can very gently nudge this back into place, it will not only get pressure off the brain stem, but it helps the head on straight. Sit up from there. I do need my head on straight. <laughs> I do too. Okay. This instrument is called the arthrostim. The kids in the office call it the woodpecker. And it lets us get right under that bone and start to slowly open that up. So disc problems, pressure on nerves, uh, muscle pain. Okay, in Gary's case, he had what's called a kyphosis or a humpback that we've been working on. And by doing the gentle adjustment, it helps people sit up, even stand a little straighter. Obviously things like neck pain, back pain, pinch nerves. Okay, buddy, heads on straight. <laughs> so what you that. say. Come on up here. Never. <laughs> okay, come on up there and just have a seat for me. Every now and then we do a little bit of the traditional type of adjusting as well, but for the most part, our patients appreciate the gentle work. So we'll see patients who've been in falls, sports injuries, injuries from work, car accidents, or just plain old wear and tear from work. Now, since we've been starting adjusting, you've been able to do a lot more workouts in the gym, correct? Yes, I have. Where are you at now? I'm at uh, 300 sit-ups, three sets of 300. Three sets of 300 sit-ups. That's phenomenal. And I can now do the backboard again. I, on the other hand, three sets of 30. Okay, you know what? We all got to start somewhere. Yeah. So, we look forward to seeing you over here at the office. Have a wonderful day. Okay, so so manually in the office, we're using x-rays. Um, I wish more docs would take x-rays because, you know, it, I don't know how you'd know what's going on with the spine otherwise. Um, day one in our office, we do a thorough health history. Uh, we do something that may be new to some of you. We Doctor sits there and you talk and we listen and take notes. I think listening, unfortunately, is a lost art. We're gonna completely analyze your posture, take the x-rays, and then I needed about a day or two to study those. So uh, on day two, we're gonna go over all the findings. I'm really straightforward. If I can't help someone, I'm gonna let them know that. Um, if I can help them, we're really uh, transparent. We're gonna go through how long it's gonna to take to get you moving better, feeling better, looking better. Um, what's it gonna cost? What is coverage so that you have this whole scoop in advance? Um, by the way, I, I never ever charge just to um, sit down with a patient and see if I can help. Um, you can always go to my website, uh, shoot me an email. I'm, I'm pretty available. You can even call the office and I'll call you back if you have a question. Um, if you'd like to come in and visit us, numbers up on the screen. Um, and again, I don't, I don't charge just to sit down and, and see if we can help. If you're part of a group that would like either a Zoom webinar done for them or in the future an actual live talk that's my pleasure it's my passion to to be an educator